I'm Iris Johnston and welcome to Page to Screen, where we explore the art and craft of screenwriting and filmmaking. This show is a production of the Tennessee Screenwriting Association. We're a nonprofit educational organization and we meet every Wednesday online and once a month here in our studio in Nashville. For more information about the Tennessee Screenwriting Association, visit us online at www. Dot ten screen dot com, spelled T-E-N-N, -N, screen, or visit our Facebook page. I'd like to thank our members who turned out tonight and who make all of this possible. Yay, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so tonight, we are going to ask an obvious question. What is a screenplay? And to give us some answers, we have Jeffrey Allen Chase here. He's from the Tennessee Screenwriting Association. Welcome, Jeff. Glad to be here, Irish. Great. So, Jeff, let's just dig in and get down to it. What is a screenplay? Well, in the most simple sense, it is like a blueprint. Uh, when you build a house, you have building plans and tells you where to put everything, what to do until you're finished. A, a screenplay is the same thing. It lays out the characters, it lays out the story, the plot, it lays out the dialogue, it lays out the images that you're going to see on the screen. Mm -hmm. And the way that it's done, uh, screenplays are in a very specific format, mm -hmm. so people who are used to reading them, like the directors and producers and stars, they expect to see certain things in certain places. And so with the format and everything else, you got a pretty good blueprint for a movie. So it's a story, yeah. okay, beginning, middle, and end. Tell right. me a little bit about that structure and where well, it came it's, from. It's a narrative story. Um, that's something that basically started, it might have started a long time before, but Aristotle gets credit for it in 350 BC when he wrote Poetics. It's a long time ago. A long time. And because it's been a long time, in this day and age now, we expect every story, whether it's in magazines or the movies or cartoons, anything, even a joke, it's got to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm -hmm. And those are the three acts that we use. The beginning is the setup, you know, the joke, you know, chicken walks into a bar. <laughs> uh, and then you get the second act, which is either where you hear the conflict mm -hmm. or you learn more about the story. And then the third act is the resolution, where the hero wins or the hero loses. And okay. it's part of our DNA. We expect okay. to have those things happen. Within that framework, mm -hmm. are there things within the three-act structure that are fairly typical across the board? I know it's not every screenplay, but most. Yeah, uh, are you talking about like characters and that kind of thing? Yeah, specifically I'm thinking protagonist, antagonist, yeah. okay. well, conflict. Um, yeah, typically you need four five or five things in every single screenplay, otherwise you don't have a screenplay. You need a protagonist, an antagonist, that's somebody who wants something and somebody else who doesn't want to let them have it, the right. villain, whatever. Yeah. Or it could be an antagonistic force, you know, a man mm -hmm. against a mountain. He's That's right, the protagonist is the main the character. Hero. The hero, That's the hero or the heroine. The heroine. Yeah. yeah, and then you have to have a goal. You have to have, what are they going for? Why am I watching this movie? It's because you want to see them either get the goal or not get the goal. Okay. And, you know, of course, we have dialogue and everything else, but um, th that, that's the basics. You know, mm -hmm. we need a protagonist, antagonist, conflict, conflict, which is part of the story, mm -hmm. and that's going to force us to read till the end so we see how it ends. Right. And so how would you say a screenplay is different from a novel or a play? Because those also have, most of what you just mentioned is also in that's novels right. and plays. That's right, yeah. Screenplays are typically very brief they uh, in terms of the writing the descriptions are brief the dialogue is brief in a novel you can go on and on for a couple of pages about what the hero is thinking what he remembered as a child what he loved what he hated in his life you can't do that in a screenplay because right. you can't show it on the screen what you can show on the screen you can show images you can show people or things doing things you can show action and you can have dialogue so that we learn more about those characters either through their dialogue or through their actions. Um, that's the big difference between novels 
or books Plus. and screenplays right. or magazines, teleplays, another mm -hmm. thing that we'll probably talk about a little bit later. Right, right. Well, we're also, um, uh, one, the other thing was a play that I mentioned. Oh, yeah. How is it different <clears throat> than a play? Plays typically, and again, there's exceptions to every rule, even in screenplays. There's rules, but there's exceptions to the rules. Plays typically are in one location. And, uh, you know, it's uh, an apartment in New York, which obviously we've seen a lot of plays set in apartments in New York. <laughs> Sometimes they move around, they have different sets, but yeah. you don't have the same latitude like you do in a movie. Because right. in a movie, you can be on a foreign planet and then you can be in your own backyard and you can show that on the screen. Dialogue is very similar be in between plays and screenplays. The format of the actual art form, when you write it, when you see it on the page, they're very similar. But that's the big difference, is that you're dealing with images, scenes, as opposed to one set. So a screenplay is just another way to tell a narrative story, but it sounds like maybe one of the most major differences is the format. Right. Can you right. please tell us a little more about that? Yeah, format is a lot of things, how it looks on the page, but the most important thing is that one page of script equals usually one minute of screen time. So yeah. most screenplays that you're gonna see for today's feature movies are 90 to 120 minutes. You're talking 90 to 120 pages. So that's one of the big things. And you know, there's always exceptions to that. You know, mm -hmm. there's a two hour movie might be 150 pages, you know, but, but basically one page equals one minute. Um, 12 point courier screenplays, somebody decided years ago it has to be 12 point courier. <laughs> so if you're writing it in Lucita handwriting because it looks cool or whatever yeah. else, don't do that because somebody's going to take a look at it and they're, they're going to toss it. It's got okay. to be 12 point courier. Um, there don't are, get creative with font. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. get creative with fonts. So it sounds like there are some very specific details to the formatting. Are there programs out there that I could get that would help me do this a lot easier? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the big daddy of them all, of course, is Final Draft. That's what right. most professional screenwriters use. It's been around a long time, a lot of new versions of it. It'll do a lot of things. Um, but it was one of the big ones, and it still is a big one. There's mm -hmm. also Movie Magic, Celtics, a free one. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even type a screenplay in Word if you want to. Yeah. But if we talk, take Final Draft as, a, as an example, it's pretty easy because you start it up and you start typing, and it's going to format if we're talking it, format, it's going to help. It's going to help a lot. A yeah, lot. Yeah, okay, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, just take us through the main things on in these programs that uh, the pieces that help you put the screenplay together. Yeah, and you. you have a slug line which is tells you whether it's an interior or an exterior. It tells you what it is, um, uh, you know, countryside in England, and then it's going to tell you is it day or night. So mm -hmm. you learn those mm -hmm. th those four things: is it inside or outside where it is and is it day or night. Right, side note in my program, it's called a scene heading. Yeah, scene heading. Same thing, right. slug right. line. Slug line is, okay. uh, that's, uh, that's in, the, in the business, they yeah. say, you know, that's slug line. Um, cool. Then you have a, a, a description, you have an action paragraph, which usually is, if you can keep it to two, three sentences, that's great, because you don't want to write a book or a third of a page because you're you eating up screen time, you mm -hmm. know. So if you can get two or three pages to say we're, we're in the country, uh, you know, the rain is falling, there's a cow, whatever else. And then you've got character names. <laughs> Those are always in caps and very specific spacing on that. Right. And you have dialogue. Okay. And that is pretty much it. Right. But those are the basics. All right. We're in the country with a cow. With a cow, yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Transitions, are those still used? Is that in the... I know they're there. Yeah. Say what a transition, an example okay. of what it might transition be. Transition is cut to. Uh, that's, that's a transition. Or dissolve to. That's a transition. Any um, beginning writer, even writers that are successful, they just want to put in the things and save that space because every time you put a transition in, you add more spaces it does, yeah. and you just lost screen time because your page now is longer than it should be. So we've got the slug lines, the fade in. We've talked about the action lines and the description. 
Tell me a little bit about the dialogue and the characters. Where are those lines on the page? Characters, um, every time a character speaks in a screenplay, we have a character name and it's in caps and it's gotta be spaced in just the right place and everything else so that we know who's talking. Right. Then the dialogue underneath that is a short little paragraph, again, spaced just the right way. And it, it tells us, uh, it's, it's, the best dialogue is the way that people really talk, mm -hmm. okay? Um, people talk with subtext. People talk briefly, and it shows depth of character. Uh, dialogue reveals the, uh, the story. Um, it pushes the story forwards. Right, I think one of the uh, easy things to fall back on is to use um, dialogue t to tell the story in, as exposition. Yeah. Do you want to just talk about how, why, why we shouldn't, we should try not to do that, Exactly, right? yeah. You want to use your dialogue to tell the story without saying what the story <laughs> is. Uh, because you got images, you got action, you got things happening on the screen. Mm -hmm. And you have to be careful yeah. with dialogue. And a lot of, a lot of beginning writers will, um, they'll put a lot of ooh and oh and exclamation <laughs> marks. And Mark Twain said, get rid of all the exclamation marks. You, oh, don't, yeah. you don't need them, you don't need them. You really don't need them because if your dialogue is written in such a way that it conveys emotion, mm -hmm. you can say, get out of here and yell it because maybe you said, and the cop is screaming at, the, at, at his right. friends. You don't need to put an exclamation it's mark right there, there because yeah. you know that, that by reading that scene, that dialogue is gonna be loud. I think you've hit on all the, uh, all the parts that are in the programs. So why don't we show folks what we're talking about? My name's Elvis Wilson. I'm with the Tennessee Screenwriting Association. I use Final Draft, so I'm gonna pull that up and kind of walk you through some of this. I like using a program because most of the formatting is automated. Really, you start a screenplay just by typing fade in. Boom, fade in. Oh, let's do a colon there. And if you see, I hit return, and this program is automatically let me uh, choose interior, exterior. So it's, you know, it's nice that it's automated. I don't have to do much work. This first scene I'm going to kind of illustrate here is interior in the kitchen. Uh, fade in. This is an establishing scene. Day is the time of day. It's for whoever breaks down the production. That's important. And it also gives the reader a visual, right? Lacey. Lacey is our first character. Characters are always capped, all caps, when they're first introduced. From this point on, she does not have to be capped. If you'll see down here, I introduce her husband, Mac. He's all capped, too. Lacey, 40s, giving a little bit of a description. This is called a parenthetical right here. She says, it wasn't supposed to be my time. I wasn't ready for this. So there's the dialogue. If you notice, it's, it's kind of squashed in the middle there, and it cuts off at 5.5 inches on the right. Then we have a retort from the husband. He, uh, a voice echoes from the dining room. This OS means off screen. So he says, Lacey, and now we're, again, Mac is a, a character, first introduction of this character, and it's all capped. Mac says, it's not the end of the world. One day at a time, oh, oops, let's say one day at a time, sweetheart. See, look, I can edit this right away. We can get through this together. If you notice, he spoke up here and he speaks again here. There's a little bit of action that divides his dialogue. So we have a continued here. You can overdo these continueds, but most people add a continued after each subsequent bit of dialogue. So I try to write things in a way that I don't have to give a lot of direction. You write things in a way that the camera can only capture these moments. So in her uh, right hand is a fancy kitchen knife, and in her left hand is a huge white onion. Now, I'm capping these because it's an element in the action that is very important to the uh, narrative of the story. So that's why those things are capped. You don't want to overdo that because it can get really messy. So at this point, we've discovered that she's crying because she's cutting an onion. Lacey squeals with delight. Really? You're the best! 
Lacey hands Mac the onion and the knife and zips out of the room. Now we see her dialogue continues here. I'll be binging a streamer if you need me. She gives him a quick peck on the cheek and disappears. Mac steps up to the cutting board and continues cutting the onion. In a moment or two, tears stream down his cheeks as he stares out the kitchen window. It's a tight little scene. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I hope that uh, helps you get started. Uh, if you have a question about how to format anything specifically, feel free to email us. Thank you for listening. So I've seen the terms screenplay, teleplay, script, shooting script. There's a lot of words out there like that. Right. So what is the difference between those? Well, script and screenplay are really the same. It's, it's just another way of saying the same thing. In fact, a teleplay is also a script. They're all scripts. But a screenplay differs from a teleplay in that tele is what it says, television. Mm -hmm. Television is typically 30 minutes or 60 minutes. Um, they also have a very specific format that they usually follow. These days, a lot of TV scripts are being written in the same format as screenplays, which are feature movies, 90 to 120 minutes. Um, but there's a lot of new writers that are sort of pushing the envelope and a lot of production companies that are saying, hey, you can write it in the same format as a screenplay, but it's still a teleplay because okay. it's shorter. It's 60 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. It is the same format. It, well, it can be. It can be. Okay. You gotta and see. This is the close. interesting thing. Yeah. It's if close. you're if you're gonna write something, do some research on what you plan to do with it. If you're gonna send it to a producer, because he happens to be the brother of your next best friend that you used to know in high school or whatever else, you better find out what he expects. Because if he's an old guard or whatnot, he may want to see those scripts in the typical script teleplay mm -hmm. uh, format where they use different spacing for mm -hmm. end of end of scenes mm -hmm. um, they specifically say end of act one end of act two beginning of act two act three so there so find out what they want mm -hmm. um, but you can probably get away these days if you're just writing your first tele teleplay mm -hmm. with writing it in screenplay format because they're very very close there's some subtle differences um, and you had one of the oh, script script Script. You're writing a script. You know, what's your latest script? Well, if two TV writers are talking, they know they're talking teleplays. Right. If two screenplay writers are talking, they know they're talking screenplays. So if I write a pilot for a series, a 30 minute series, mm -hmm. would I be correct in saying, I have a teleplay I wrote for the pilot, or does that sound antiquated and wrong? Should I just say, I wrote a screenplay for a 30 minute Tell series? You would probably say, I wrote a TV pilot. Okay. A script for a TV There's pilot. There's another one. Okay. A script for a, for mm -hmm. a, for a 30 minute TV crime drama. Okay. It's very important also to put genre. Your we genre, haven't, we yeah. haven't talked about no, that yet, but yeah, because you don't want to pitch a crime drama to somebody who only does comedies and vice versa. Right, right. If all they do is crime drama, they don't want to see a, a love fest, you know, a romantic thing That's probably, right. you know. So. so then my last one is the shooting script. Yeah. Shooting script. Shooting scripts are one step or one or more steps past a screenplay. A screenplay basically lays out protagonist, antagonist, the scenes, the dialogue, the story, the plot, which we haven't even talked about yet. A shooting script is done either by the writer, but more usually by an employee of either the production team, if it's a producer, movie producer, mm -hmm. or the TV production team. And that shooting script has scene numbers. It's got scene one, two, three, four, and other things like that so that you can look at it and see, oh, this is a script about ready to go into production. That's great, yeah. And screenplay sort of is the big blanket of all of it though, yeah. right? Yeah. So we've gone over a lot of information. It's been great, but if people want to learn more about screenwriting, where should they go, what should they do? The first thing that I think people should do is pick up a screenwriting book. Mm -hmm. um, Sid Field's screenplay has been around for years and years. It's got a lot of great information in it. Um, Save the Cat. Um, uh, one of our TSA members, um, Bob Sines, wrote, uh, that's not the way it works. I'm reading so that one. I like it a lot. It's a great book. Yeah, it, is, it really is. Um, 
The other thing that is as important, if not more important, is read as many screenplays as you can. Go to Google or DuckDuckGo, put in free screenplay PDF download, and you will find a wealth of information. There's hundreds of sites where you can download screenplays, learn and see what that writer did with his characters, with his dialogue, with his settings, with his story. There are Lots. podcasts. Yep. There's all kinds of ways that you can enhance your knowledge and learn more mm -hmm. and more and more. Because if mm -hmm. you really feel a burning desire, you want to do this, you want to be in the movie business, learn as much as you can. Oh, I'm sure there's so many podcasts and blogs out yeah. there. And yeah, and honestly, Iris, one of the best ways that you can really see how a screenplay and a movie work together is to actually read the screenplay while you're watching the movie. Because then you can see what the writer had in mind and how it got translated to the screen. Let's take a look at how one of our favorite movies went from page to screen. The incinerators and fall back by squads. Say again, all after incinerator. I said I want you to lay down a suppressing fire with the incinerators and fall back by squads. Talk to me. Talk, copy. Talk to me. He's oh. gone! Get them out of there! Shut up. Do it now! Shut up! Hicks, whoever's left, get the Just hell out of here! Just shut up! God damn it! God, where's the phone? Where's the phone? Sergeant's gone! Get the f*** out of here! Let's go, Marine! Hudson? Vasquez? Hicks! Hicks! Fall back! 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 Fall back!
that's all we have time for this time. I want to thank our guest, Jeffrey Allen Chase from the Tennessee Screenwriting Association. Jeff, that was some incredibly helpful information today. Thank you, Arish. Appreciate it. Anytime. Great. Thank you. And if you want more information about TSA, our meeting schedule, and our programs, please visit us online at www.tenscreen.com or check out our Facebook page. We would love to have you as a member if you're not already. Click the QR code on your screen to find out how to join TSA. And remember, we meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time Zone through Zoom, except for on the last Wednesday of the month when we meet here in the studio. Jeff, do you have any words for our audience and our fellow storytellers out there? Well, yeah. Uh, this stuff isn't easy. Writing is a solitary exercise, and we encourage everyone to get involved, either with the TSA or some kind of writer's group that can give you support and honest feedback. That's so crucial, especially when you're starting out. And the best piece of advice I could give everyone is keep writing. <laughs> I love it. Always great advice, Jeff. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. I'm Iris Johnston, and thanks for watching Page to Screen. And like Jeff said, keep on writing. Good night.